Greetings everyone, Brett here with Hammerhead Model Making. And today I am bringing you another full build video and we're gonna be looking at Fly's Westland Wessex. This is in 132nd scale. Um, this is a multimedia limited run kit. And uh, I'm building this one as a commission and the customer wanted to build a tribute to his father who flew on these. And so I was quite honored to be to be asked to do this for him. So the the overall build is going to be kind of um, an amalgamation of different helicopters, different paint schemes uh, with some custom work as well to to kind of bring out this tribute for the client's father. Um, construction begins uh, like normal inside the interior of the helicopter. Um, the what's what's interesting about this kit is you are given detail for like the rib structure of the you know the inside of the passenger cabin here uh, but essentially just consists of a bunch of straight pieces that you have to cut and trim to length and then glue to the inside of the helicopter fuselage um, additionally because there is a slight curve to the inside of the fuselage you actually have to bend the plastic a little bit because they they kind of come straight um in order to make it fit properly. You can see there are little like lines to, to guide you where the placement is, um, but there's no like, you know, def definite um, joining components, no pins, no, you know, things like that. So it's just, you just gotta take your time, get everything cut out to the right length and uh, get it all installed. So this was, this was kind of a new experience for me. Um, but in the end, the, Construction was relatively straightforward, and as long as you you know read the instructions carefully, and well, I I would read it like two or three times just to make sure I knew what I was doing. Um, uh, shouldn't have too much of an issue. This this part was kind of interesting where you actually have to glue the rib over the window and then and then trim it. Um, I found it easier just to glue the whole piece and then trim it as opposed to like trying to trim it to size and then and then glue two individual parts together. Um, I just found this easier so once the glue dries you can just go and, and snip it um but so we have to do the the ribs here and then we'll eventually we'll have to do the the stringers as well in order to get this done uh one thing i would like to say about the fly model is um the what the kit offers in terms of detail on the interior is uh it's 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 a good start it's not bad uh, but this is definitely like a scratch builder's dream. Uh, the, the, there's a large canvas to do a lot of scratch building work on the interior. If you wanted to have like the, you know, the sliding cargo door open, um, so much, um, like so much work you could put into this, uh, the, w w for this particular build, we were kind of going with, going with all the, the doors closed. So, um, wasn't going to spend too much time doing a lot of scratch building in here just because you really wouldn't see a lot of it it's got little windows and once it's all closed up it's pretty dark um so now we're here now we're doing the stringers and again you just have you know given lengths of straight plastic and you have to kind of cut it and and uh, make it fit so I, I add a little bit of wire detail with some uh lead solder or, or lead wire there and now i'm adding some photo etch components here so uh the photo etch is, is supplied in the kit um, and interesting enough, interestingly enough, the instructions call for the placement of these, these strengthener plates along all of the ribs and stringers. Um, but they actually don't give you enough, uh, to at least to, in order to follow the instructions as written, they don't give you enough parts. Um, so I found that a little annoying. So you kind of have to pick and choose where you're going to um you know leave some off and so i ended up leaving most of them off on the opposite side of the wall because it would it would be harder to see from the outside um the the mechanical comp components for the rotor uh, these are all supplied as resin parts uh, so you do have to remove them from the casting block that's why you saw that big sanding mark on the bottom of that thing um, it, it took a little while to kind of get it sanded down correctly to, to get the right orientation. And again, they very, they give you very little indication as to proper placement for everything. And, and in this situation, the instructions are, they're not really adequate to really kind of 
describe where everything is supposed to fit. So this this um, this really was kind of a trial and error trying to get things to fit. Uh, and eventually, the, so the, the parts that I'm adding right now, uh, I have actually had to remove those and just add them later because it just wasn't working. Um, another interesting thing about this kit is it supplies you with the seat belts and the the rear cabin seats on this weird paper. I, I, the best way I can describe it is it's like, it's almost like a cloth paper, similar to like what you'd find on a US dollar bill. Um, so it wasn't quite paper. It was, it, I, I mean, it cut like almost like a cloth. Um, so this was interesting. And so they come pre-colored and uh, you do have to cut these out individually, which which can take a while, especially if you're doing all the, the cabin, um, you know, the seatbelts back in the cabin and you get photo etch for all the buckles. Um, I normally like this type of detail. I, I think the, the material used for the seatbelts was, is interesting. And I think maybe if I had, um, given more opportunities to use it, I might learn to like it, but Initially, it was I just kind of considered it all right. Um, I, I didn't like necessarily like that it was pre-colored, and in fact, for the for the main um, like the pilot and co-pilot seats, uh, I just eventually paint I just painted over them, and um, that way I could I could I I wouldn't have to worry about the the brass look. So, but construction was rather straightforward. Um, the uh, the buckles just kind of loop over using some super glue to, to secure them down. And, uh, and then we can glue them to the seats. A lot of the interior pieces like the seats and the control consoles and things like that are supplied in resin. Um, the actual quality of the resin is very high. The detail is nice and crisp and looks really nice. Uh, I think the biggest issue with the kit is that all of the resin parts were just thrown into a bag together and there were a lot of broken pieces um i could see that there was a lot of like really fine detail like switches and levers on like the center control console um but many of them were broken off and damaged there were a lot of little pieces um that went on to the rotor assembly that were damaged and broken so it's just kind of disappointing to see a lot of this really nice detail uh, but it was all just broken and, and damaged. So here we're using some Montex masks to do the both the interior and exterior masking of the canopy. Um, it's nice that they supply the interior masks because the, the canopy is quite large. And if you have the, the, the pilot and co-pilot side doors open, which, which they will be on this, um, it's, it's very prominent to look inside there. So it's nice to be able to mask off the interior and um, get that painted. One of the issues with these masks is they, they kind of struggled to conform to the compound curves on the inside of the canopy. So just, you know, make sure that they're pushed down and, and secure before you paint. Um, moving on to painting of the interior, just using Vallejo's primer. Um, this has kind of just become my, my interior primer as it were. Uh, basically on anywhere where I don't have to use any masking really. So we're just going to give it a nice good black primer coat, get everything painted, um, and uh, and then we'll start moving on to the actual colors. Uh, I do like, so they that diamond pattern on there is meant to represent the soundproofing material that they would put around the inside of the cabin, and I actually like that they included that. It's It kind of stands out. Uh, against the, the the other detail, so looks pretty good. Uh, so now we can start hitting everything with paint. Uh, we're starting off with a light gray out of from Vallejo for the interior. Uh, this was just sprayed on full coverage. Uh, again, I knew that a lot wouldn't be seen in the at least in the the passenger cabin area, so I wasn't going to spend too much time doing like pre shading and things like that. Um, good detail on the on the floor here. Um, you know, all the different panels, the little access covers and things like that and fasteners. So that's nice. I, again, the, great starting point for scratch builders. If they wanted to go, you know, all out doing the interior, um, it would look 
you could make it look fantastic. Um, from what I could see based on reference pictures, what flight includes is relatively accurate. So, um, you know, you wouldn't need to do a lot of structural changes to, to really super detail this. So here we're just painting the soundproofing material, uh, this kind of camo green color. Um, I, I saw a lot of different types of colors used in the Wessex. So, I, you know, I, you wouldn't be wrong to use different colors other than the green. Now we're just painting the uh, cushions on the pilot's and co-pilot seat. This is just done with um, Vallejo acrylic paints and a brush. And um, just being careful to keep things nice and tidy here. Um, I usually try to do, when, when I'm brush painting with Vallejo acrylics, I usually try to do two thin coats as opposed to like, you know, one solid coat or something. Um, I think you'll just get better coverage and a smoother finish if you do that. Uh, painting the buckle detail with a metallic color, and then we're going to hit everything with gloss. And you can see here that my gloss is almost empty, and uh, but um, still my favorite gloss to use. So we just get everything a nice good solid coat of gloss so that we can do a little bit of weathering on this and seal in all of our paintwork. And um, yeah, it's uh, pretty simple stuff to use. Um, highly recommend it if you need a good acrylic clear coat. So now we're going to be using MIG's interior wash. Um, I didn't want to go super heavy on the, the weathering and the, and the client specifically asked to, to keep it relatively clean, but you know, make it looked, make it look used a little bit. So we're going with an interior wash. It's not nearly as strong as what I would normally use. And um, so it just, it does create a little bit of definition in the recesses, but not going overboard and making it look filthy and grimy. So once it's been applied and we dry, it dries on, we can remove it. Uh, here I'm just using a cotton bud um, to remove the excess. You've got to be careful around all that scratch or all that photo etch detail that you don't knock it off on accident. Um, you can see here the the detail on the floor really picked up that wash really nicely. Uh, again, you could you could have a lot of fun weathering and scuffing up that floor, um, but we're just we're just keeping it simple for this build. Um, <clears throat> now we hit everything with a matte coat to seal in that wash and to tone down the shine and we can start assembling everything. Um, general fit of the kit was, it was okay. I, I'd say media, media, mediocre to okay for most parts. Um, there's, there's never any like clear attachment points for anything. Um, you just you just kind of have to look at the instructions and say, okay, I, this is this is where it goes. Um, so just be aware that that can be a challenge. Uh, here we're building the benches for the passenger compartment. So the the, uh, the frame here is plastic, and then we add this you know cloth paper like material for the actual uh, seat fabric. Um, this I am leaving in. I will leave this in the the blue color. Uh, I, I, I won't paint this. Um, I, I saw many references of this blue color in pictures, so um, it, it, it will work for purposes of this build. Uh, but basically we just, you know, we have to fold over all these little tabs. Um, <clears throat> and I'm just using super glue here. I, I figure you could probably get away with using PVA glue, but uh, this, this cloth material is rather thick, and so I, I just wanted something with a little bit more grip to it. Uh, and here we are attaching it to this side of the the uh, cabin. And again, there's no real definition of where things are supposed to go. So just make sure you're constantly checking the instructions. Um, <clears throat> and then finally, we have a we have a bar here that we're going to attach that will that we will attach the seat backs to. Um, and again, the seat backs just kind of like the seat belts for the front. This is all done with that cloth material and photo etch components so um i mean time consuming but straightforward and relatively simple and uh in the end it's fairly convincing i think if you were to like super detail this and you know have the door open um <clears throat> there might be a different option for doing this i'm not sure i don't know what would what would look better but um it works it, it's not bad um and once you have you know both benches together, it it looks pretty convincing. So with uh, with the interior work done, we can start working on getting the windows installed. There are different versions in the kit that you can build. 
Um, so you have to be aware of what windows you're going to be using. And, um, and you, you do have, if you want to do the larger windows, you will have to do some surgery, cutting larger openings for them. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, but they do give you different options. Um, another interesting feature of the kit is you have the option of displaying the tail section, you know, folded over. But in order to actually secure it in the, you know, in flight position, for example, they just expect you to kind of butt these two pieces up together and glue it. So uh, I, I'm adding some scrap plastic in there uh, as reinforcement and to help keep those aligned better. And uh, so just be aware that you'll need some extra support there. Uh, here we're just getting the fuselage halves glued together. Um, like I said, fit was okay. There are gaps that will have to be filled, but you know, the, like these cockpit components, these fit in really nicely, um, and everything lined up pretty good. So here we can start adding on the nose parts. Um, alignment here is okay on the sides. Large gap in the center, um, but overall the shape is is pretty accurate. I think the least, the most ill-fitting part is this part here, the lower part. Uh, this did require the most filler to to kind of get it blended in. Um, but all things considered, when you got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six different components all coming together for the fuselage, I, I think it actually went better than I was expecting it to, especially for a limited run kit. So here we're just supplying some Tamiya putty to, um, to these seam lines. I, I had done a little bit of filing and sanding prior to the putty uh, just to kind of even things out a little bit, but it still required a decent amount of putty to get this thing to to really look decent. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on the sanding because it literally is just sanding, filling, sanding, filling, priming, checking for seams, and then doing it all over again. And then finally just, you know, fixing panel lines and such. So um, you don't need to see that, but it was it was a significant effort to, to get that done. Um, so now we can start installing some of the cockpit details before we install the canopy. So here we're installing the seats, uh, pilot co-pilot seats and all their flight controls. So this is all resin going in here. All these components are resin. The uh, control columns I ended up pinning with small uh, wire so that they wouldn't break because uh, they just you're literally just supposed to glue them without any kind of like attachment pin or anything <laughs> so it's just like i i could see that that was not gonna not gonna work so pinned them uh instrument panel installed again there's real no like solid connection point here so you just kind of have to play around with it make sure uh, kind of tack it in and then test fit the the canopy to make sure that it's all lined up but once you play around with it a little bit it all kind of pops into place and and things line up so um, yeah, I, I sprayed the inside of the canopy with black, um, and then removed the masking. So here we are installing this rear cover. This part is resin. This required a lot of sanding to get it to fit correctly. Uh, it was not, it was not well shaped. Uh, there's also this kind of canvas cover that goes over the front. It was damaged and I eventually had to repair, do some repairs using epoxy putty on there. Um, and then we have, there's numerous photo etch grills that go on and these all fit flawlessly i was very impressed with with the uh, quality of the photo etch on this for these grills they just they fit exactly where they were supposed to uh, including some really complicated ones back here on the tail um like this one here required very precise bends and folds but it it, it looks really good i think in my opinion um and uh, really pleased with how that t turned out. There's a lot of detail that goes on the underside of the uh, helicopter here. Um, so part of it is in plastic, part of it is in resin, part of it is in photo etch. So <laughs> it really, it really uh, tests your multimedia ability here. Um, the resin tires were absolutely beautiful. Uh, lots of detail, great, you know, great look. My only complaint about them is that they weren't molded with, you know, simulated weight on the tires so i kind of thought that was unfortunate because you know this is a at 132nd scale this kit's rather large and these tires are rather prominent so that was kind of unfortunate i had to replace the uh, tailwheel assembly here with brass um <clears throat> because the plastic part broke pretty much the first time i tried to put it on 
Um, so just be aware that part is really quite fragile um, and replacing it with the brass was, was kind of necessary. So here we have some more photo etch pieces going on, steps to get up to the cockpit. Um, <clears throat> the photo etch really kind of really make this nice and elevate this kit. Uh, there's a lot of photo etch in the kit. Um, tail rotor assembly, again, so two of the blades of the tail rotor assembly are separate and I added uh, steel wire pins in there to keep those aligned. And then we can add a lot of the nice little photo etch detail that goes on to here. Um, so if, if you were to build the kit as is out of the box, uh, there's a lot of weak points that uh, you, you would, you'll want to address. Uh, like I mentioned, the, the tail wheel, the rotor blades, both on the tail rotor and the main rotor blade, um, all need to be pinned and secured correctly. Otherwise, they just won't, you know, they won't stay glued on. Um, so here we're cleaning up some of the resin detail for the main rotors. And uh, so the actual rotor blade themselves are molded in plastic, but the rotor, most of the rotor hub detail is resin. One of the nice things this kit does is for the rotor blades, they actually have sag already molded into it. So you don't have to worry about molding in the, you know, the droop of the rotor blade. Um, that's, that comes as, you know, out of the box, which is nice. Um, <clears throat> so here I am drilling out into the rotor blade to be able to accept uh, brass pins so that I can pin it to the rotor hub. Um, the weight of the blades combined with, you know, the, the weight of the resin makes the rotor head assembly quite heavy. So pinning is absolutely necessary. Otherwise, there's no way that these butt joints would just you would be able to glue them and it would hold for any significant amount of time. Um, <clears throat> so we got all four of the main rotor blades pinned in and now we can start adding the rest of the detail. So some of the detail is plastic um, and then you'll notice that I added a 1 8 inch steel rod down the center as the main support. They would literally have you just glue the um, this whole rotor assembly on with a tiny little resin pin and, and I knew that that, that wasn't going to survive. So uh, a lot of work is needed for the rotor assembly to actually make it sit on the helicopter. So just be aware. Um, everything was primed in black. This was done with Mr. Surfacer. And here I am painting certain areas in white in order to do some custom numbers on the helicopter. So these custom numbers are direct, directly related to the client's father and have significance to him. So it was kind of fun to be able to to, to do that um, and the client actually supplied me with the correct fonts used by the Royal Navy so I was able to print out what I needed and then create my own custom masks out of uh, tape um, so this this aircraft will be marked as number 271 um, and, and again that's significant to the client's father so kind of neat I, I, I like doing projects like this where um, you know, we're not necessarily replicating a specific aircraft in history, but rather uh, representing what the aircraft meant to the client's father and and to what his service was. So um, this was this was quite an enjoyable project for me to work on. Plus, it, it really allowed me to, um, you know, practice skills that I don't use very often, such as creating custom, you know, paint masks like this. Um, and while it worked for doing, you know, these numbers, which are rather straightforward, um, you know, if anything more complex than that would would have required aftermarket masks, but uh, this this worked really well. So so basically, what I'm going to do is apply these number masks over the white paint, and they will stay on while I do the rest rest of the painting. So the yellow Tamiya tape there is just to help me keep everything lined up, and this is based on reference photos and the instructions on where these numbers would appear on the fuselage. Uh, so we have the 27 on either side of the fuselage kind of after the main cabin. And then we'll have a large 27 on the nose. And then there's a the smaller 271 is kind of in kind of on the bottom sides of the fuselage by the landing gear. 
Uh, so now we can spray the upper color. We're doing a yellow here. Uh, I don't often use lacquer paints, um, mainly just because I paint indoor and I'm, you know the family doesn't love the smell of lacquer paints wafting through the house. Even though my air extraction system works pretty good, you can still get that residual smell. But um, for doing such a large, you know, large surface area in yellow, uh, it was kind of the best option. And then for the blue here, I ended up kind of mixing up a custom color blue. Uh, that the the client approved of and uh, really really happy with how this custom color turned out uh, it did require a few layers to really get the full coverage that I needed to cover both you know the the black primer and the the white and yellow oversprays from earlier painting sessions um, but once it went on I was I was really happy with with this tone and color but like you like I meant showed there I was using four different colors to mix this color. And now everything is, uh, all the masking has been removed and we can hit everything with a gloss coat. And I apologize, I don't have um, a video of the masking removal. It was rather satisfying, but I will have some satisfying canopy masking removal later on. Um, so we give the whole thing a good, you know, two good coats of, of aqua gloss so that we can prepare for decals. Um, really really pleased with how that yellow turned out that uh lacquer yellow just really stands out and was really vibrant and, and uh solid so very happy with that uh now we can do uh decals so we're just applying the decal and then once we get into the position using a cotton bud to gently roll out any excess water or air bubbles underneath the decal uh these are the kit decals and they were very nice uh, I didn't see who printed them, or I don't recall who printed them, uh, but they were very thin, uh, reacted well to um, my Salva set, and uh, they were, I was very pleased with these decals. Um, and I mean, even, even with the large carrier film, like on the Royal Navy decal here, once it got a coat of gloss over it, the carrier film practically disappeared. So really happy with these. They, they look great. They look nice. Um, and uh, yeah, the interesting thing, you have to do the, the red center separate from the rest of the, uh, the roundel there. Not quite sure why, why that is, but getting it aligned took a little bit of time, but we got there in the end. Um, I think the most troublesome decal was this large one that going on the kind of the back spine here. Um, it is a large decal and it's kind of going over an interesting compound curve. So it took a little while to get it both aligned and uh, all the air bubbles removed and stuff, but we, we got there in the end. <clears throat> so uh, now we're going to go ahead and paint the wheels. So this is, I'm, being, I'm painting these with um, a really dark gray. I didn't want to go full black. A lot of the pictures I saw showed kind of a, a lighter color to the tires. Uh, so that's why I chose not to go with full black here. So we're just getting this painted. The Montex set did come with masks for the tires for spraying them. Um, but I, but because I had already installed them, I just found it easier to hand paint these. Um, and there's a good, you know, a good lip along, along the rim there. So um, it was easy to, to keep the paint on the tire itself. Now we gave everything another uh, quick coat of gloss and we can hit everything with a wash. And like I said, Klein didn't necessarily want to go super heavy on weathering. So I'm using that interior wash again, uh, just to kind of highlight the panel lines, rivets and fasteners uh, on the yellow portions of the helicopter. We'll leave the blue portions relatively untouched. Um, Cause I didn't want to do like a, a, a white panel liner on the blue parts and, and a dark panel liner just wouldn't have shown up. So we'll just kind of leave it as is and, and really let the, the yellow kind of create that sense of a slight wear to it. Uh, but the, the yellow really took this, this wash nice and, and I like the, the way it turned out. And just like in the interior, we just, you know, you put it on, let it dry, and then you can wipe it off with a cotton bud or a paper towel or whatever you have. Um, <clears throat> So quite pleased with it. And uh, moving on, we can start removing masking. Like I said, this was very satisfying. Probably one of the most satisfying canopy repeals I've done in a long time. Uh, all of these, these masks worked great. I didn't have any leaking underneath and nice crisp lines. So 
I was I was really happy with this. One quick note about the canopy. Um, I did have to polish the canopy. There was kind of like a weird pebbly texture on it. Um, and uh, kind of had interesting results on clarity. So just be aware of that it it does require. So I did I used some Tamiya polishing compounds to kind of shine that out a little bit. Um, so now we can kind of add the last details. We got the exhaust here and then we can put the rotors on and then we're just about done. <clears throat> so I appreciate you uh, watching. And if you've made it this far, thank you. Uh, here's the grand reveal. Uh, unfortunately, this thing is so large that it did not fit on my turntable. So we'll kind of have to do some uh, some panning shots around the, the exterior here to kind of get an idea of how it turned out. But really happy with this. Client seemed pretty happy with it. And um, this was a, I, I hadn't built a helicopter in over a decade. So this was, this was fun and I enjoyed it. And uh, definitely a fun one to add to my build history now. So anyways, thanks for watching. And um, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Leave me a message. Uh, like this video if you liked it. And we'll see you on the next video. Take care.